what is going on boys and girls of youtube so today's video is the day before the patch and i wanted to do kind of a mini recap and just talk about the patch because this is a little unexpected for high res to pretty much fully change the meta again this soon it's been not even three full months i feel like just about three full months of us playing the game but not that patch being live where that patch affected the meta huge this one is going to as well so i just want to cover kind of each role talk about what i think is most important for you guys to know to play this video is dropping on monday before the patch it's on tuesday so this will just prep you for the patch and that's kind of the goal of this video i want to start doing this if it's a major change patch which this is and we're just going to go over kind of the roles like the 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 importance you know the important changes and the things going on within the roles and really just note what changes you should expect and then as the meta develops over that week or two then we'll have the finalized builds and all that stuff but for hunters there's kind of some major changes so Hyrus is pretty much saying that they want hunters to be the baseline current hunters to be the baseline so they don't want to over really buff them or do anything crazy with them or change their items too much but they did change a little bit they changed gilded arrow to now give four gold every time you get a kill instead of three so a slight buff there right then they added crit to ornate arrow ornate arrow used to have five percent base crit and then the stacking 20 uh 20 stacks of crit so as a full item, you used to have 25% crit when you fully stacked. Now it has 35. So they just added 10% crit to that item. So that item becomes much better early and late. Then they also buff Leather Cowl and gave it a little more power. Um, this item's kind of been in a weird spot because it was super meta for a while last season. Then it fell off and it hasn't really been built lately. And now it's probably going to be built again. You're probably going to see one of these two items built a lot. And then you're going to see either Blood Forge because they added a, a attack speed to it being built or you're going to see some form of like a devos combo being built um we'll see what happens with that 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 just want to note that those starters are changed and blood force now has attack speed so expect to see those used a lot also with that crit arrow no longer or now having more crit you don't need rage between this and then building into a demon blade which is super core right now in almost every adc build and then if you want to fully commit to Deathbringer, you've got enough crit there. You've got more than enough crit. There's no need for rage. Your starter covers rage now, which is a pretty big deal because that opens up early attack speed and lifesteal that you didn't have pre uh, this patch hitting on Tuesday, hitting tomorrow. So those are really the hunter changes within the gods. Nothing too crazy going on there, except for there are healing items now that can affect these gods. It's unlikely they become heavy meta we'll see how that plays out uh, because they will affect other roles and other classes mages big big change to mages because you had hell get a hyper buff and you had aphrodite get a hyper buff aphrodite's buff really affects her as a tank in either the support or the solo role the most but she is a little bit better in the mid role hell's buffs now the heal the big aoe heal uh, gives attack speed to the teammates. So massive objective burner there to help your teammates shred. And then your one in heal stance can hit creeps. So your clear becomes better. So she becomes a much, much, much better and easier to play mid laner where her clear might have suffered before. Or maybe you had to use specific abilities to clear that you couldn't poke or go for kills. That's going to change once this patch hits. 100%. 100%. Now, in terms of builds, we are going to see even more shifts to the mage build. So we've gone through three or four meta builds already and they're going to change again it is very very likely that we see doom orb become pretty much the most standard meta item um, in the game your starters haven't really been touched you're more than likely going to see a lot of sands especially since we're assuming doom orb and from what i've seen from the pro players and a lot of the high level players this is the case it's that starter item that cooldown into doom warp and the reason is they removed the mana from doom warp so it used to have 200 flat mana now it gives 10 percent pen so it is so easy for you to hit percent pen cap without having to build a percent pen item that you might not necessarily want it is very likely we see uh, doom orb into spear builds so spear of Nesso, spear of magus divine ruin um and then rod of tahuti and ob shard or rod of Tahuti, soul reaver and then the hell builds will change the hell builds will be very different you'll have to see as they go so that's really what you should be paying attention to as a mid mage player guardians guardians really didn't shift too much items didn't get changed all too much but he okay overall but individually sylvanas is two 
now hits creeps it doesn't do full damage to creeps but sylvanas already has very good clear now he has 10 times the clear maybe not 10 times but you know <laughs> definitely massive in terms of of that clear potential and the other thing is the items which is going to affect your gods like afro and hell um one of the hold off for talking about them here is oh, you find it rod of the ass clapius ass claps uh asclepius gives 30 percent bonus healing and the way this works unless things have changed is anti-heal can go up to 80 percent now with this patch not 100 you can't 100 percent anti-heal anybody uh, unless you're a specific god like odin Serket, apwash um and i think that's it items basically plus other you know abilities cannot get to 100 percent only gods can fully do 100 percent those specific gods so with this extra healing dealt it goes on top of that so instead of doing 100% healing, you do 130% healing, which means if you're anti-healed 80%, you are still healing for 50%. It's a lot of numbers. Just, just realize you're still healing for a lot. If you have this item on top of it, it's aura it gives 10% cooldown reduction to teammates. And I don't know if they changed it. It looks like they better remove it. It was giving movement speed before. Um, I don't see it on here. So I'm wondering if they hot fixed it. They definitely, they definitely hot fixed it. <laughs> they definitely all fixed it in so that's good to know i didn't realize that maybe they changed patch notes or added some new patch notes today um so yeah rod of asclepius is gonna be really big on these healing gods even on gods like sylvanas uh anyone who can really just help their teammates with healing terra uh, giving away cooldown just by pressing two is kind of ridiculous um or just because you're pressing two doesn't actually happen on the two it's an aura but yeah just the fact that you do that much more plus you're healing for that much more massive so Sylvanas is going to see a bump in play. You'll probably see more Terra, more Yamoja. Terra got changed to where her she gives more mitigation now rather than dot healing or, you know, healing per second um, or a, a hot a healing over time. Sorry from her ultimate. So she actually got a little bit better because taking less damage is always better than trying to heal it up later. So that's pretty big. Notice just prep for those gods in the meta. They're, they're going to be there. They're absolutely going to be there. The thing, though, with Guardians is they're going to be competing with afro support now and it's going to be very hard for them to compete with afro support that's just absolutely as true as it gets now we're on to the warriors warriors are getting some nice changes as kind of a counter side effect um those warriors that you try to get away transcendence with which really you shouldn't be transcendence is now 100 gold cheaper so it's even better and then they added some items there's brand new items coming into this patch you've got Ooh, I'm on the wrong items. They're under power items. They are these. You got Kadoo Shield or Club, which is now a little bit different. It's basically that Rod of Asclepius. This is the one giving movement speed. That's my bad. Um, I don't know why I thought that one was giving movement speed. So this is physical power only. Can't be on the magical gods. Uh, so this one gives movement speed. Didn't realize that. That's my bad. I thought they both were giving it. I'm trolling. So good statted item. Power, health, MB5, cooldown, right? Increasing healing. Uh, by a lot so this is really only going to pick up by a few warriors that can actually aoe heal like guan and horus will be good potential items for those gods depending on the role you're playing if you're playing in that solo lane role it might not be as common to see but the stats are nuts like this is a lot of stats on an item then the next one vital amplifier this item is op 40 power 200 hp 1585 20 percent attack speed and then every time you heal yourself or an allied god you get 10% attack speed and 5% basic attack damage for six seconds. Stacks three times. Each time it stacks, it resets that six seconds to a full six seconds. So there are going to be some gods to really pay attention to, both warriors and assassins with this item. Amaterasu's one will fully stack this item, right? Anytime you flip it to heal, it will fully stack this item. That's, that's very important. That's very, very important. Hercules can get a stack of the item, but it's very unlikely that he consistently ever gets full stacks. Um, it's pretty much never going to happen, right? So don't be worried. Too, don't be overthinking Hercules on that item. But besides that, you've got uh, Bologna. Bologna is going to be another really, really big one. With that Chalk gets, gets it easy too, but Bologna is a really, really massive one with this because Bologna's three will always have those stacks up. Like it's, it's just you're just gonna. Those stacks are just there. It's easy to get the three stacks. Takes no time at all. Not challenging. Not difficult. Um, very, very good item for Bologna. Ama. And then we get into the assassins. And it's kind of crazy the effect this item has. So we've seen a lot. Oh, before, before we do that. Before we talk about 
so much. I should have should have gone a different order here. There's the final item. This is the other OP item since we're talking about warriors right now. Sekhmet Scepter. Power, health, cooldown, MP5. Same as the other items, right? Except for this item. After healing yourself or an allied god with an ability, for the next six seconds, every time you damage an enemy god, so you proc it, right? You heal somebody, you heal yourself, you proc it. Then for six seconds, every time you do damage, it takes 0.5 seconds off of your ability's cooldowns. It can only proc every second, so it can proc six times. That's a lot. That's three seconds off of abilities. So this item is absolutely crazy on any god that has healing and relies on abilities. So Achilles has healing, right? Amaterasu has healing. Bologna has healing. Chalk has healing. Um, Erlang Shen has healing. Erlang Shen's a little bit pushing it. Guan Yu is a big one. We're going to come back to that in a second. Hercules healing. Horus healing. Mulan healing. Super strong item on Mulan. I can't even tell you how ridiculously good it is on Mulan. Shiva has healing, but Shiva's a little bit different because he heals on his ult, so I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, Wukong, same thing. Not really as good. Surter, got tier healing. Mana doesn't heal anymore, right? Big ones to note for this item, just for you to realize that are, they're kind of OP with it. Mulan, Hercules, Horus. Uh, the amount of cooldown they're getting is crazy. Then, Guan Yu, the number one. Guan Yu is going to see a spike in play. You know what Guan Yu does? Um, his one used to give him like cooldown, right? Like it's it, between the passive uh, and the one you're building up, you're stacking and you're reducing cooldowns for yourself. So every time you heal, your abilities come back up, right? Well, now you also reduce healing friendly gods reduces all cooldowns by two seconds for Guan, right? And one second for his allies. And every time you heal, you're getting two seconds off your abilities. Every time you heal your allies, they're getting a second off of their abilities. Now pair this with Sekhmet's which is going to give you potentially three seconds off of your abilities over six seconds. You're able to heal so much in that window that you can pretty much reset everyone's cooldowns multiple times in, besides your own. Your own are going to be up over and over and over again. You're going to be able to, you know, auto two, three cancel, auto two, three cancel. Like you're going to be able to do all that very, very, very quickly if you want to. But you're also resetting your, your teammates, whoever you're diving with, whoever you're around healing. So if you're supporting and healing your back line, their cooldowns are up all the time. If you're diving and healing with your jungler or whoever, their abilities are up that much faster. This is going to be a crazy, crazy god for this meta because of the items on top of that buff coming out of left field, right? So be ready. On top of Afro being nuts, and I, I'm very certain Afro is going to become heavy meta. Guan Yu might become, be one of the best gods, especially team gods in the game. Uh, it will not surprise me at all. If I were to do a tier list right now, estimating what we'd see in the next patch, that would be one very, very high on my list. Extremely high on my list. And on to Assassins. So Assassins, Transcendence is now 100 gold cheaper. So when you get Assassins, you like to go either the jungle to Transcendence, go full cooldown build. That is a possibility now. Now, besides that, those healing items affect our junglers as well. So I want to reverse my way through, through the list here. Thanatos got buffed, if you didn't know. His one and his three got one second taken off of their cooldowns. Now, Thanatos' one heals him, which means he procs these healing items that we were talking about. You're never going to go Kadoosh shit club on him. Vital amplifiers argue, you could argue it, but it's never going to stack three times, so it's not worth it. Sekhmet's, though, on the other hand, is going to cause your one to come basically right back up in a short, short, short window. If you have full cooldown, plus this item is giving cooldown and high power and health. So, and, and, as a tier one item, it gives 10 power, 50 health, 5 MP5. 5 MP5, not really good for that, it does, right? But 10 power and 50 health is more than the 10 power you would get off of Mace. It is also more than the 7 power you would get off of Morningstar with mana. So it is potentially the best level one item for you to go in the game now. Uh, especially if you want to rush it and get that cooldown online. It's not an expensive item. It's a little bit more expensive than Jotun's. But if you go into this and then into Jotun's, you have crazy cooldown right off the beginning of the game. Well, at the, you know, potentially the seven, eight minute mark if you get a kill, which Thanatos usually does. So you're going to see massive spike in Thanatos' success, in my opinion. Set is going to find some value out of these items as well. Uh, both Sekhmet's and the attack speed uh, items are going to be good for Set. Ravana. Ravana was one that I, I thought of, like, I realized last night. 
Sekhmet is going to massively buff Ravana. Your abilities have no... You're able to spam your abilities on Ravana, where usually you kind of one rotation and then you wait a few seconds. No, 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 no. Your, your, your rotation, rotation, then you're waiting and then you are you have another rotation. It is crazy how good it is on Ravana. So these healing gods, these gods with little bits of healing in their kit are become that much more value. Nemesis 3 does heal her, but it's a little bit harder to get a proc, at, like get the proc you want out of any of those items. You you can probably see Sekhmet's on her, but it won't be as crazy. Naja healing, another one that is going to gain from Sekhmet's. Um, the other major one, you know, you, you've got Kamazots gaining from it. Bakasura potentially gaining from it. Bakasura stacking the attack speed one's a little bit more difficult. If you don't go cooldown, which you usually don't on Baka, that attack speed one's not going to be as good. But... I worked my way backwards for this reason to end the video here. Arachne. Arachne has been a huge talking point for me for the past three months because Arachne sucks in this meta. She, she doesn't gain anything in this meta. But with the item being introduced, which is the attack speed item, which we talked more about on Warriors, a little bit less on Assassins. This, this attack speed item is always fully stacked on Arachne. Pretty much. It is very, very easy to keep stacked. Uh, Arachne's abilities, if you don't know, her one is on 11 second cooldown at max rank. It heals you and it tick heals, right? Healing per tick, uh, heals basically six times. So that item stays stacked. And by the time the buff falls off, that one is almost back up. It's got like a two to three second window with no real cooldown in the kit. Late game, you have red pot. Say you build one other cooldown item for some strange reason. It'll be up all the time. It is giving you 50% attack speed off of this vital amplifier. Arachnes 2 also gives attack speed. Um, and then the items in the game, if you're going attack speed, kind of just hard damage carry build, uh, with the fact they introduced attack speed to Bloodforge, they, you know, you have other items, you can hit cap attack speed like it's nothing. Now you can hit cap silver branch stacks if you never I, most people, I, I don't even know if it was possible before. I think maybe there was like Apollo at one point could do it. I don't even know if you can do it right now. Silver Branch, every time you get a stack, you get two uh, two power, right? So for every 0.02 attack speed, you go over 2.5 attack speed. You gain two physical power for every stack. Max stacks is 100. Aragni can, at full build, with uh, a Shogun's around her, and then any other buffs. You know, there's multiple other attack speed buffs in the game. But with Shogun's around her, she can hit 100 stacks on Silver Branch. So with an, the attack speed build, I have a video up the other day. Silver Branch is giving you 235 physical power on top of 10% pen. There's no item that competes with this at that point. There's no, no way. 235 physical power is higher than most gods usually have running around. Just in general. Just, just once they're built. You're talking about with a red pot, with a 3k buff. Say you take... Uh, the, I think I was also picking up purple. That's not, so, you know, if you don't have other buffs, grab purple. Say you take purple, say you take red. Your damage now is 10 times higher than most people. So Arachne's late game is ridiculous. It's two to three shot potential with no crit. I've never seen anything like that before in terms of late game Arachne. Usually late game Arachne is a little bit weaker. It is scary. You don't blink three, two. You just two blink and start autoing them and they're dead. It's crazy. Uh, you would usually one as well to get the attack speed from your one. But yeah, it's absolutely crazy how much damage Arachne can crank out right now. So that's why I wanted to leave her for last. Overall, meta changes. The map is better. I've gone back and looked at the other map. The map is, it's better. Once you readjust, it's a slight adjustment, not crazy. Um, as a jungler, it feels like you have more jungle to farm. So at first, it might be a little overwhelming. You'll adjust. It'll be okay. The game feels good. Healing is going to be very frustrating and be prepared to build anti-heal items. If you don't build anti-heal items, pretty much every game, you're probably going to lose. So if you're a supporter solo, be looking at Ox. If you're any role, you know, Divines, Brawlers, anything about anti-heal, Aura, Pestilence, Contagion, you're going to be building them in this patch. So please, please be prepared for that. So hopefully this little video covering this stuff, talking about it, gets you prepped. Uh, for tomorrow i figure the day before is the perfect time for this it'll you you guys can form some ideas of what you want to try out or you know the first gods maybe you want to play tomorrow so have fun be ready for some crazy changes it's gonna be pretty cool to watch uh, everything develop see the meta change so i'm ready for it hopefully you guys like the video with the like button if you did make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you in the video tomorrow the next day the next day and the next day